Hey my friends, it is Marlon Gibbons here. Thank you for joining me at Music in the Making here in the dungeon. So, you're interested in getting your tracks licensed or getting into the industry of licensing music, licensing your tracks. So what I wanna do is share with you, I mean, I can't tell you how that journey is gonna go for you uh, because there's so many different variables. I don't know what kind of tracks you write, I don't know who you're connected with, I don't know how, how dedicated you are to producing content. Um, but what I can do is share what my experience has been, important bits of information that I wish I had known going into this. Um, so that's what I want to try and share with you today. Yeah, let's, let's get to that. Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you would be um, have patience. And I know that sounds cliche and you've heard me say it a million times. And if you watch other channels like this about music licensing, they'll tell you the same thing is you have to be patient. And, and I get it's human nature to want results quick and especially in this day and age of social media. Um, but that's just not typically how this industry works. Um, and yeah, I'm sure there's success stories of of, of guys and girls that you know know somebody have a connection and, and they got in real quick and they started getting placements quick. I personally don't have any friends or colleagues like that. All of my friends that are in this industry, although the stories might be a little different, it all happened over um, a long period of time where they, they put in the, the time and effort and made the mistakes and, and learned as they went. And, and it's that that's a common story, but uh, that's of my friends, that's how it happened. It wasn't uh, uh, an immediate thing. Um, and it certainly didn't happen that way for me, like quickly, it took a long time. I. For me, it was, I've mentioned in other videos, it was kind of an accident, um, learning about licensing and that kind of thing. You know, I had a video game placement and and I kind of learned about it the hard way because it wasn't, there wasn't an awareness of licensing your tracks as there is today. There wasn't as nearly as many libraries and the production quality of these libraries was nowhere near what it is today, thanks to technology and, and also it becoming a bigger thing. So you learn off, um, you learn from other, other uh, composers and writers. And so I kind of went down this path, A, without really, without a roadmap, without really knowing where I was going. I also didn't have um, so much of a great focus. I, I didn't have an end goal. So when this started, it wasn't like, oh, I can make a living off this, that's what I want. And, you know, just tunnel vision and go get it. I kind of, um, I kind of went down the path just enjoying it and, I was able to have, I guess, a little more patience in that in that respect. Um, and a little later on down the, that road, I decided that, yeah, this is something I definitely wanted to do full time. So I became a little more impatient at that time, um, but it's hard. And, and you'll see of the friends I have also that do this, I have some friends that are just kind of getting into it. Um, it's, it's exciting to see them get their first few placements um, because you see that that whole um, excitement kind of revived and that motivation, uh, you know, kick them, inspiration, let's call it, and to get them going down the road more because it takes a long time and, you know, doubt starts to kind of creep in there and go, well, it's just not for me or, or man, I busted my ass. I'm not getting any results. Um, but it's not that you're not getting results. It's just that the industry in, in getting your tracks placed uh, takes time. And I'll get to those other points, but there's other things that play a part in that as well. It takes time. That's all I'm telling you. Okay, and this one is is really important. Um, and I didn't learn this until I had dealt with several libraries. Um, and that is, they'll all offer different agreements. There is no one uh, industry agreement or one boilerplate template agreement. Um, and what I mean by that is what they give you and what they keep. So your splits, there's publishing and there's writer shares. I won't get into sync fees and that kind of stuff right yet. We're talking about back end, so royalties. After your music has been broadcast, it generates money through a pro, BMI, ASCAP, SOCAN, PRS, and then they'll send the checks out, right? It takes a long time for all that to happen, but that's what we're talking about here. So the library will offer um, splits, different splits, a different percentage, right? Commonly, you'll see 50-50, uh, and it's up to you. And I'm not telling you what's fair and what's not fair. It's it's really up to you to decide what you're willing to give up or keep. Um, and and what I would also suggest is if you are if you solicit to a library and they they like your tracks, they're going to contact you and say, 
here's what our agreement looks like. We'd love to represent your tracks. Um, there'll be a lot of other information in there too, but um, as it relates to what I'm talking about right now, they'll tell you what their agreement is. Um, and sometimes they want all the publishing and will let you keep your, um, and they'll say let you keep it, it's up to you to decide, but they'll keep all the publishing and you can keep all your writer share, <clears throat> pardon me, um, or or they'll split everything 50-50 down the middle. That, that percentage might be different, might be 60-40. Uh, I've even seen libraries that want 100% exclusivity, 65-35. That's up to you if you want to go down that road. It's important to understand um, whatever that split is, is to research the library and and look at what what do they have to offer beyond just putting your music in their catalog. How how big are they? How engaged are they with, with the industry? How active are they? Who are their clients? Um, are they getting placements? Are there testimonials? Can you phone them and actually talk to them and ask questions? Um, like, are they really gonna work hard to get your tracks placed? Are they just trying to make a quick buck? And the list of considerations goes on and on. Um, so even though you might you might get a, an agreement that says, hey, we're offering 50-50, um, don't dismiss it so quickly. Um, look at the library, because they're all different, right? And they all, they all as far as quality, it's just like music, there's quality libraries and there's libraries that are just shit. So, you know, don't dismiss it so quickly. They don't necessarily get to keep your music forever. You might sign with them for 18 months or two years and then get your music all back 100%. Um, they may just, as far as representation, right? There is no one specific contract offering for all libraries. They're all different and, and unique to each library. It's up to whatever they want to offer their writers. Um, and then it's up to you to decide whether you want to go down that path or not. Just be aware that there are different agreements um, and they, they range from being in your favor to being 50-50 to being more in the favor of the library. And in any of those cases, I would strongly recommend look at the library and, and do your research on them and find out what potentially are they going to do for you? Um, and are they gonna work hard to get your tracks placed? Do they already have um, a standing in the industry? All those kinds of questions, so that's that one. Okay, so this one is not so much advice, it's just, um, it's interesting because I learned only from being in the industry is that, you know, I would say work hard and, and write lots and spend lots of time just building your catalog, make sure it's great quality right? I mean, those are kind of obvious things to, to success, right? Build a big catalog and, and work hard. Um, what's interesting to know is that of all the social media presence you would see around composers, like I have an Instagram and I have Facebook and all that crap and I, I do the, the YouTube video and so I have a bit of a social media presence. Um, and you, you can find other composers that write specifically production music and, and are into licensing and that kind of thing. Um, but it's interesting to know is that there are so many unbelievable composers that have like zero social media presence. They don't have a website, they don't have, you know, Instagram or, or very little presence on Instagram and, and just social media in general. Um, so just know when, when you're out there and you're following all these other like-minded um, composers and, and producers, uh, and you're all trying to get into the industry and, and put your work out there, just know that it's kind of like the iceberg effect is that there's a small percentage of us that are on, and I'm, I'm in there too, is that there's a small percentage of us that are on social media and, and sharing with each other and engaging and doing all that kind of stuff too. But just know that there is like exponentially more that are just in their studios pounding out incredible, unbelievable music um, and just getting it placed and making so much money and collecting the paychecks and and they they they're not doing what you and I are doing um and it's not and I don't say it because you need to be aware of your competition um but I say it because just understand that this industry is growing it's huge and it, and it's only getting bigger in my personal opinion um and there's a lot of guys and girls out there producing and filling these libraries that are absolutely superstars and you won't find them on social media. I can guarantee it. Many of them are, are close friends and uh, they have zero interest in in being in a spotlight. They're just pounding out tracks. Um, 
for me personally, I, I like the balance of both because I like engaging with you guys and connecting. And I'm not saying one is better than the other uh, as far as having no public presence and, and showing your wares and, and that kind of stuff. You know, when this camera goes off, I, I bust my ass to uh, to produce work as well. So I, I kind of have a balance with it. But um, just just be aware of it. There's there's so many unbelievable composers out there and you've, you've basically never heard of them. And the last thing I'll tell you is have the perseverance to see it through. And specifically what I'm talking about is when you get to that point where you want to give up, when when you finally hit that wall and go, you know what, I've been trying everything, I've, I've put in the time, whatever that time is, I've put in the time, I've I've written so many tracks and I've put so many tracks out there, I've, I've been rejected by however many libraries, uh, you're gonna wanna, there'll, there'll come a point where you, you contemplate and question whether you should keep going down this path. Keep going down the path. I'm telling you, I've personally been there more than once, several times, and if you're just kind of getting into this and you're starting, you're probably um, very motivated, inspired, and, and ready to go. Um, but I'm just telling you, when you get to a point where you feel like it's not working for you and you start to question whether you should keep going, keep going. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Um, and it's it's really hard and it's easier for me to say it than, than for you to do. Uh, just remember this video, come back to this video and, and, and just remind yourself that um, you need to stick it out a little bit longer. It's hard, and especially after so long and not seeing results, um, but just stick with it and maybe try and change your approach a little bit, uh, but don't give up. Just keep at it, because I'll tell you that it's worth it. Stick it out, and and even my friends that, that are now starting to get placements that have kind of just gotten into the industry, um, they're, they're super pumped too, because once you get that one or two uh, first couple placements that that kind of revives your whole excitement and and you keep going so so I'm gonna stop there and hopefully uh, you guys are able to pull some value out of some of the things I've said um, and, and I appreciate you watching every week and I honestly want to see you succeed um, just stick with it and and keep at it and uh, cheers thank you guys so much for watching